Hey, do you want to marry for romance and financial security? I thought so. Well, you better get yourself out to a ball. What else are you going to do? Or maybe an evening assembly. But do you have anything to wear? Hmm? Could you make something? Mm, that fabric might do. Okay, but it might be a little plain with just that. Do you have anything to zhuzh it up a bit, maybe? Oh, some pearls? Um, yeah, that could work. I think so. Why not give it a try? After all, how else are you going to find your own Mr. Darcy? Back in the 21st century, of course, we are actually making this dress out of some Indian woodblock print cotton, but we're not starting with that. We don't usually start with the good fabric. So instead, we're going to start with a plain cotton muslin that we're going to use for a mock-up of the bodice. Now, to be honest, I don't normally do these more fancy, upper-class sort of garments when I'm looking at historical clothing, because I just don't really relate to it. I grew up in a pretty poor family. Aesthetically, as well, I find that upper-class clothing throughout history tends to be less to my taste than more the middling sort, merchant-class folks. And also, I think one must be mindful when they are reenacting the upper class that the upper class usually gets there and stays there in any era by doing some not good things and taking advantage of people or at least being insensitive to their plight so it doesn't hold a lot of interest for me but i thought it would be a good way to challenge myself as a sewist and also everyone wants to have a nice show piece once in a while so that's what i was hoping this dress might be now there are some bumps and bruises along the way but I learned a lot through this project. And this is going to be the evening portion of my Regency capsule wardrobe. Now the first bump in the road I hit was when I was putting this together, the front side piece I assumed went around the back. I'll be honest, I don't normally fully read pattern instructions. So I was a bit confused as to why this seemed so enormous in the torso. There was no way this this would be a proper fit for me. Hmm. But then I slowly realized that um I was being a little bit stupid. In fact, I'm mouthing because I'm stupid <laughs> right about here. I had turned the piece sideways. That was not actually supposed to go around the side of my body, but rather over my shoulder to be my shoulder strap. And after that, I could envision and assemble the bodice much better. So I popped on that sleeve and tried it on. So obviously the fit is pretty good. Uh, there's enough from it to close in the back over my stays. But the sleeve is a little bit big, so I decide when I make my final project, I'm going to tighten up that band a little bit so it sits higher on my arm and gives more poofiness, which is the desired look for evening wear in the Regency. With the assurance that this pattern pretty much works for me, it is time to finally cut into my fabric. Now, when it comes to the skirt for a lot of black snails patterns, they actually do something that's really clever and helps save paper when you're printing. They will show you the basic shape of whatever part of the skirt needs the shaping, and then it'll say, extend however many inches to get the full length. You don't need a long rectangle, you can figure that out yourself is the assumption. Now this skirt has an optional train detail, and I thought that would be really cute and add just a little bit more of that elegance to the look. Not a huge train because you wanna be able to move and dance, but the problem I ran into is no matter which direction I was cutting this on my fabric, I didn't have quite enough because it's not a very wide fabric. So in the end, the solution I came up with was to cut it square 
and then use extra pieces of fabric at the end to cut a separate train piece to add on. And that worked out pretty well. So I'm cutting this on the fold, both the front and back skirt pieces. And then it's time to assemble the bodice. Now I did use the machine at a few points during this project, but especially for the finer details like along the edges of the back and the neckline, I did a whip stitch. And I couldn't possibly have finished this project without my little cat assistant helping me, now could I? So she gladly came to keep me company, or perhaps it was cold and she wanted the blanket, who knows. Here you can see me attaching the sleeve cuff, and the way that I worked it was I overlapped it a little bit more to make it a bit tighter. I folded it in half over the raw edge of the sleeve, and then tucked in the seam allowance on the top and bottom edge, and whip stitched it into place since the stitches would be visible from the outside of the garment, since it's not a seam. And it gives a rather clean, crisp look, I think though you'll see in the end I was still not totally happy with these sleeves. Once the bodice and skirt are assembled individually, it is time to put them together. So I anchored the center front of the skirt and the center front of the bodice, and then I turned it inside out so that I could add the pleating. For the back closure, instead of cutting into the skirt, my bright idea was to sort of put them on a fold so when I pulled the back piece over to button it, it would also pleat that back fabric and create a closure. I don't know if that was a completely period accurate way to do it, but I've seen other skirts with that sort of feature and I quite liked it and wanted to try it. So once I have the back settled, I can pin in my pleats as symmetrically as possible, going back and forth from the left side to the right side to make sure it's the same approximate number and spacing of pleats. Then it's time to attach the little train piece that I cut out of scrap fabric from the end of this project. So I'm just tucking it in, I cut it to have the same shape, but basically all the pieces that I'm missing from the straight side, so the two tapered side pieces as well, so it creates a sort of half moon shape. It's not a particularly lengthy train, or a particularly full train, but I do think it gives it that extra bit of drama and gravitas that you'd expect from evening wear, which makes it distinct from a more simple and practical day dress as I've made before for this era. After that, I attached the waistband portion, very similar to the sleeve cuff, except this one doesn't need to be folded in half. And one of the features of the waist is that it also does have a drawstring. Getting into the home stretch with this project, it is time for buttons and buttonholes. So I'm just carefully marking out where my buttonholes will be on the back. While the days are slowly lengthening, I still find I benefit from coziness and aesthetics to save me from these dark dreary days. So a candle and a chai tea latte became my companions as I worked on this detail work for the project. You really should be mindful though that you don't want your candle to ignite your dress, so I wisely moved it out of the way. I attached the buttons. They're just small white buttons. They are plastic but perhaps at the time they might have been shell or bone. And then I marked out where I was going to need the buttonholes and the size I needed. I decided to do these by hand instead of using the machine because they're quite small. Although, I kind of regret it. It took a, a long time. Thank you. 
after all the buttonholes are complete, I finish off the neckline, again using that whip stitch since it would be visible, just to smooth down all the edges as a small hem. Although I did just get a new foot for my sewing machine for the first time, a narrow hem foot, which mm, could conceivably do this for me. So we'll test that out and see how it compares at a later date. So now the dress is finished, but since this is for a ball or fancy dinner party, we're going to zhuzh it up a bit. First, of course, we're going to insert our drawstring. It's a rather plain bit of cotton tape I'm using, but I might replace it with something a little prettier later. This is just to help cinch in the waist a bit though. So I'm just pushing it through and with a fat tapestry needle so I don't lose the tape along the way. This is a good trick too if your drawstring gets pulled into like your skirt or your hoodie, just grab the end, pull it out, and tie it to a needle and you can just rush it through like I'm doing here. Pro tip. You can also use a safety pin if you don't have a tapestry needle, just kind of clip it to the end. It just needs to be something smooth that you can feel that you can work through the channel. So now it's time to add our decoration. So I chose this simple trim with miniature pearls on it because I thought it would be just an elegant little touch to add a bit of detail to the dress. So I'm adding it here to the cuffs. I'm also adding it to the front along the sides of that center front piece. And I'm just basting it on because I'm not sure if I want to play with the placement a little bit more at a later date. I'll be honest, I was a little disappointed. I feel like the neckline is a little too high and the sleeves are still too loose and they hang too long. By pushing up the sleeves, it does help create that silhouette. Now, of course, people might have had a higher neck dress, but I think I want to cut it down to fit the fashion a little better. The train is subtle, and I think it could still work for dancing. So not a total loss, but a few adjustments I still do want to make. I hope you'll tune in as I keep adding to my Regency uh, capsule project and finally doing a full reveal of how I'm going to mix and match these pieces. I'd also like to give a special thanks to my patrons. There are now four of them very exciting for my new Patreon. If you'd like to support me, the link will be down below in the description. Bye!